Hello guys, uh, welcome back to another fleet tour from Staffordshire Roleplay. Uh, Chief Constable A. Walker here. Today we are up at the Tactical Support Department base uh, and we are joined by two of our Central Firearm Unit officers. Um, we've got Inspector Andrews here, say hello. Hello. And we've got, once again, PC Pulp here. Hello. Uh, today we're going to be looking at what what known as in, what's known as in staffs is the ARV and dogs. Um, we're going to be looking at our arm response fleet. Um, we're going to talk a bit about the department, uh, and we're also going to be looking at our um, dog support fleet, um, who work hand in hand with our central firearms unit. So um, I think we'll start with uh, we'll look at some of the cars, and we'll we'll ask some questions, and then um, we'll look at some more cars. We'll ask a few more questions, and then that'll be that'll be everything. We won't keep you for too long. So uh, I'll hand you over to uh, Inspector Andrews, who'll be telling us about uh, two of these, two of the finest vehicles in the fleet, in my opinion, which is the X5s. Alrighty. So uh, as you can see, we have two BMW X5s. Uh, one we have a 14 plate, and we also have an 18 plate. Um, the difference between these both, well, both of these vehicles in a whole, is that one has uh, the newer Justice light bar, and one has the old Stellar light bar. Um, these are both used generally by firearms, uh, uh, the central firearms unit, uh, to obviously make sure that we can get into all areas uh, within Staffordshire, uh, rural and not rural, uh, and also to keep up in pursuits if need be. Um, they're good for carrying equipment, um, and yeah, we can get up to those high speeds, which is good for uh, firearms pursuits and other pursuits. And commonly. Is it, do they carry, do any of your ARVs or any specific for these, do they carry any additional equipment that any other ARV doesn't necessarily carry? Um, within the X5s, um, there isn't really much equipment other than our basic uh, stuff that we all carry in our, in our firearms vehicles. However, uh, in the X5s we do carry, uh, where possible, uh, retractable ladders so we can get inside of uh, windows and stuff like that. Perfect, beautiful. Okay, well, I think we'll move on to the uh, the next the next two set of X fives here, uh, and we'll hand back over to Inspector Andrews again. All right. So uh, as you can see, we've got two BMW X fives here. We've got Bravo X Ray One Eight Mike Kilo Foxtrot and Bravo X Ray One Eight Alpha Oscar Papa. Uh, these are two. Uh, unmarked ARVs within our division uh, providing obviously covert surveillance for uh, firearms operations but not just firearms operations we can also help in any need be uh, where a covert vehicle is needed um, so obviously the vehicles have a setup which uh, is identifiable when it's in response uh, to an incident however when not uh, it makes a good unmarked car uh, spotting out uh, Traffic offences or anything related to matter of crimes uh, that could be uh, successfully ended via the use of an unmarked vehicle. Are we alright to just stick the lights on this one? This one here in front of me. Yeah, sure. Have a look at it. And, uh, and, and, and how common are these? You know, how, how commonly would you see these out on operation? Um, usually, uh, we have. Uh, Two marked firearms units to one unmarked firearms unit okay. um, within shift. Um, so it, it overall depends on um, how many officers we have bucked on for the shift, um, and that will obviously depend on how Perfect. many units we send out. Okay, beautiful. Um, I think and these two uh, two XC seventies over a. Uh... Alrighty. So. Um, these two uh, XC70s both look the same from a certain angle, however, both of them are different in some way, shape, or form. Um, so, um, one of these vehicles have rear light in the rear back windows, and one doesn't. Um, these vehicles are both used for the same purpose, however, um, both use as firearms vehicles, uh, both carry the same equipment as every other arm response unit. Um, it's just a nice addition uh, for lighting in the room. Beautiful. Okay. Well, I think we'll take a stroll over to the the other set of ARVs. We'll answer some of the questions that I've got written down uh, that people have asked. 
and then we'll go through the the next set of vehicles uh, so for those who have been asking about obviously the, the process of joining uh, our firearms team central firearms unit tactical support um, the process of joining so uh, firstly you'd have to be in the community as a member uh, in the past we've obviously offered direct entries however we've stopped we've stopped running any level of direct entry now and everybody that comes to our firearms team has to be a member of the community you have to be a substantive constable uh, and you have to have your advanced ticket which is your driver permit and you have to be a taser an STO which is a taser trained officer uh, that would take probably averagely between five and six weeks to achieve you then then the recruitment the transfer status then has to be open once the transfer status opens you'd be able to then apply for a transfer to the department and what will then happen is, is your line manager they will put a comment on there and they will give their information their input and then obviously it'll be down to the inspector and the superintendent of whether the transfer gets approved once the transfer gets approved firearms will then look at it and they will say yes we're going to take this person on an assessment or they're not if they take you on an assessment what they'll then do is one of the firearms trainers or assessors they'll come out with you operationally in patrol in response or traffic wherever you are they'll crew with you they'll make an assessment um, you do a two patrol assessment if, if they're happy you then get officially transferred into the department once you're transferred into the park department you'll get given a, tra uh, a handbook uh, you'll have a few days to read that and then you'll get your blue card permit which allows you to carry a pistol is that is that is that correct inspector um so the blue card is the handling of firearms okay. uh so it will be your initial handling of the firearms that we use however obviously you would still need uh, your afo qualification uh, to actually use the firearms operationally oh, okay and then just coming around lads to let him go that, you'll then get your afo and then obviously you'll do a few patrols as a, as a qualified afo and then uh, you'll then get your enforced stop training and then obviously you finish your division probation and you'd be a fully qualified firearms officer so that'd be the process of joining the department um, then after that obviously there'd be other opportunities so uh, like PC Pope here you'd be able to progress and to become a specialist firearms officer um, who were can train more around specialist methods of entry uh, the different weapons handling different weapons that they carry uh, different means of stopping vehicles uh, and then above that obviously we have a joint joint operation um, with with another force and we, we do a CT we run a CT course as well but that's you know we don't have apart from obviously some of the senior officers we don't really have many CTs because we don't necessarily have an operational need for them um, there's other areas you can become trained in once again you can obviously progress into being an MPAS pilot even when you're in uh, the Central Firearms Unit and obviously your advanced life support training, things like that. So that would be the process and you know those, those are the prospects of joining. You can also become an Operational Firearms Commander as a PC um, and that's a national thing. And then obviously when you become an Inspector, uh, like Andrew's here, you'll be able to become a Tactical Firearms Commander. Uh, then when you become a Superintendent, you'll be able to become a Strategic Firearms Commander. So those are our different levels of authority and command within firearms. And then you have the normal command structure, which is sergeant, inspector, chief inspector, superintendent. We don't presently have a sergeant within the central firearms unit, but we have Inspector Andrews here, who looks after all of our firearms officers operationally and he manages all their training and development in their portfolio. You then have uh, chief inspector Matthew Downs. He oversights both the uh, central firearms unit, central motorway policing group, and he overlooks after our dog support team. Then you have Superintendent Ethan Blakemore who overwatches all of those areas together and he's responsible for making sure that what they do operationally is maintained to a high level. And then above um, then above uh, Ethan you have ACC Wall who is our Specialist Operations Lead uh, and he's responsible for leading Special Operations from a, from a strategic perspective at the top and he's to be the one that works and devises me? the training and the plans that our firearms officers will follow. Um, that that's uh, that's about the joining process. Uh, we'll have a look at some more cars, and then uh, I'll get the lads to show you and explain a little bit about the uniform and then the equipment they carry. So we'll hand over to PC Pope to explain uh, what these two vehicles here, these unmarked and marked vehicle, are. 
Thank you very much. Uh, so obviously on the left we have the unmarked uh, Audi A6 Allroad and on the right we have the marked. Uh, both of these vehicles are um, the, the, probably the most popular um, in Staffordshire. Uh, when obviously um, you, you, you think of firearms, if, if you're into police vehicles and you're a supporter of the, supporter of the force, this is the first vehicle you normally do think of when you, uh, you think of, of Staffordshire firearms. Um, obviously within the department these vehicles are used uh, very substantially we uh, they're, they're always out and uh, we use both of them as well as the, as well as the marked and the uh, the unmarked uh, in some forces marked will get used more than unmarked so i can get i can 100 percent say i bet being out in both of these vehicles um pretty much exactly the same as well you know you know what i mean that they are uh obviously the, the unmarked you'll, you'll use um for um, different, obviously, operations, uh, there's there's a limited amount we can discuss, obviously, here. But uh, certain operations, obviously, the, we better it, we're, it's best to use the unmarked, and uh, the marked is more of that kind of. Uh, we are here, you can see us. More of that deterring crime rather than kind of um, kind of l looking from a distance uh, and, and waiting for that crime to be committed. So then you can obviously move in and deal with it um, in the best way possible. Uh, so that's when obviously the unmarked and the marked that we, they both can be used in different uh, different ways operationally. Um, they are obviously the same as all of our vehicles. They are off-road capable, which is great for Staffordshire because we we do live around. Obviously, um, we've got kind of Chase as well as um, a lot of other rural areas around the uh, around the Staffordshire borough um, where these vehicles really do come in handy. Uh, big, powerful vehicles. Uh, as well as being able to carry a lot of uh, equipment in the back, which is amazing for us as well. Beautiful, thank you. Right, and back over to Inspector Andrews. I mean, these are your favourite cars, so I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you discuss yeah. these. I'll just jump in and... Indeed, uh, they are my absolute favourite vehicles. Uh, these are the brand new uh, XC19s within the uh, Central Farms Units Division. Um, they've just recently come out of the workshop after having their livery, their light bars and all all the lights and glory fitted. Um, obviously, uh, these are both very lit up vehicles. They have a lot of lights within, um, so it's good for visibility when responding, but also uh, good uh, to also keep them marked uh, in a situation where you're following a vehicle. Um, Obviously, we've got the basic livery on the marked version. Um, with the normal Battenberg, obviously the yellow bumper, and obviously the red code of 2 1, and then the asterisk. Um, and the set of the vehicle is, is different to others uh, because of the fact that on this vehicle we have the Defender. Um, now, uh, the most used by, I do believe, is the Justice. Um, so it's, it's just kind of a unique vehicle within the division. Um, it's nice and chunky, so it's good to drive. And uh, yeah, that, that's that's all. It, it carries the same equipment as every other ARV. Uh, but yeah, it's just a nice uh, car to drive in a shift. Beautiful. Right then. Uh, well, what we're going to talk about now is another few questions about the equipment you carry, both as, a, as an authorised firearms officer and a, a bit more about your uniform. So... At staff at the moment, we obviously we do pride ourselves in having one of the most accurate fleets out there. We, we pride ourselves in the most accurate uniform. To present standing, obviously there's, how many vehicles did we say? There's 14 vehicles here on display, uh, minus the four dog cars. So there's 12 firearms vehicles that we have here. Obviously they all have three or four number plates each, depending on obviously the staff's uh, fleet list that we have access to. For example, our um, our marked Audi here that but there'll only be three there'll be three variants of that three different number plates, um so we we're missing one car from the firearms fleet now and that's the Volvo V70 ARV and then that'll be our entirety of our central firearms unit fleet complete for now, um and we pride ourselves in accuracy you know being accurate and realistic and. A lot of time and effort goes into the making of these vehicles and obviously thank the development team for that. Obviously going on to the uniforms, currently in the process of reworking our firearms uniform as well as our response uniform. We're changing our response uniform from the standard vest that most communities use 
We'll move into the um, rigged vest. The loadout. Uh, the loadout yep. vest, should I say? Obviously, we're going to be posting a picture of that this evening on Twitter for for the people for, for members of the public to see and people who are interested. Uh, we're going to talk about the firearms uniforms. I've had some questions about the call signs that are on the on the shoulders from one of my videos that I released, uh, and then we're going to talk about the equipment that you carry. So, could you just explain to me, Inspector? What these, um, obviously on your sleeves there, it says 701 on obviously PC Pokes, it says 83. Can you just explain to me what those are used for? Yep, uh, of course we can. So, um, Alpha 70 is my call sign uh, while I'm on scene on a deployment of some sort, uh, depending on what kind of deployment it is. That can be an advanced deployment or a standard uh, deployment. Um, 70 is uh, my call sign to identify that I am an inspector. Um, and every single firearms officer, once they complete their training, they're always given a alpha call sign, which is what we refer them to. Uh, it's mainly a, an identifier on scene. Uh, eight three shows that as a constable. Um, so eight eight zero and above uh, shows that as a constable within the division who uh, has completed their AFO training uh, and has their alpha call sign for identification purposes. Um, as uh, we don't really like to show our column numbers. Uh, but if we uh, are required to give them, we will do. Perfect. Um, obviously, for those, the seven zero is uh, an inspector. The sergeant is seven one. Is it? Uh, I. Well, we haven't got that assigned yet. Uh, we need to look in the paperwork for it. Oh, okay. Well, mine as chief constable, I'm a qualified firearms officer. I am Alpha two one. My DCC, who's also a qualified firearms officer, he is Alpha 2-2. And the ACC, Harry Wall, who's also a qualified firearms officer, he's Alpha 2-3. Uh, and then obviously we have, um, then we have obviously our superintendent and our chief inspector. Um, I don't have theirs to hand, but obviously operation, when they're going out as a firearms asset, they will go out with their, with their Alpha call signs as well. Um... So take us through the standardised equipment that you would carry, uh, if you wouldn't mind, if that, that's that possible. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So um, start with, we have our sidearm. Um, this is equipped with a flashlight. This is to use in obviously the circumstances where we can go for a less, uh, well, it, it's still lethal, however, it's still, in a sense, less lethal than uh, maybe a carbine that can cause a lot of damage with the side uh, when it refracts off the bones and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of the weapon to use instead of a carbine. However, we also have the use of taser as well. Um, the flashlight's obviously used to navigate through areas in the dark uh, where we don't know if uh, we could have people hiding in bushes and we're not sure, so we have the light just to make sure. Okay. Moving on, we have the X2 taser. Um, which has just recently been transferred to us um, as we've moved from the X26. Um, just recently been given these as they've been put on order. All of our officers will be getting these soon. Um, carries a nice set of two cartridges. We carry uh, another set of two uh, within our vehicle, so uh, if need be, we can reload um, in that stance. Um, within your normal uh, blue card, You'll also uh, receive uh, your HK416, and this rifle is equipped with a scope, a grip, and a flashlight. Um, one of our main uh, firearms used uh, during incidents uh, uh, that involve uh, firearms in itself. Um, and then we also have the G36C, also equipped with a grip, a scope, and a uh, flashlight. Um, so we have the standard uh, policing gear such as the baton and a flashlight as well as our beanbag uh, well our, our button round uh, and that's in our vehicle at the moment in time we haven't managed to get them out um, and also our breaching shotgun uh, which is also inside the vehicle um, we also do use flashbangs in certain cases where it's been authorised by uh, the FDO um, in circumstances where flashbangs are deemed suitable um, for the current incident. But uh, I'm going to pass you over to Alpha 83, um, who's going to tell you a little bit about um, specialist firearms officers' uh, 
weapons. Okay. okay uh, so obviously, as a specialist firearms officer, um, as a new specialist firearms officer, um, I've had the uh, the great opportunity to obviously play around with some new weapons, and um, they are really. It's it's really great how you are able to. I mean, because they're they're tools at the end of the day. They're tools which allow us to do our job the best possible way we can. And as obviously most people see guns, that they're not a great thing, you know. Um, but for us, uh, it allows us to protect our own lives as well as other people's. So if we obviously the better guns we have and the better tools we have, that allows us to obviously deal with. Um, incidents uh to the best of our ability so um bear with me one second so okay uh, so as a specialist uh, farms officer uh we are equipped uh with obviously multiple different weapons uh the most substantial uh one for me uh is obviously uh the sniper rifle so this uh obviously this this gun uh it's a, it's a it's a i keep on saying great but it's a um obviously a long range weapon so for instance if we have a um a problem with somebody who is um someone who is far away <laughs> that's just as much as i can really say uh we would obviously get a, a get a vantage point uh, myself um obviously if we are on advanced um firearms authority and it has been granted i would then it's my job to go up find a vantage point a safe vantage point and uh, see if I have obviously a um, a clear line of sight to the suspect or the situation which is going on. Um, obviously, we, we we deal with uh, multiple different instances every day, uh, but uh, I I haven't had a chance obviously to deploy this weapon operationally. Um, but obviously, they are there to be used, and uh, they're not obviously just a uh, just a nice uh, kind of uh, show or on show. They they do get used. Um, and they are a great part of our obviously weaponry. Um, okay, so next, as I obviously uh, specialist firearms officer, uh, we are trained in breaching. So uh, breaching is a very very important part of uh, obviously gaining access to buildings and uh, doing it safely is a completely different story. Most people they they uh, see us as people who we just kick the doors down and breach in and we just go in all guns guns blazing. Yep, that does happen. You know, we do we do kick down doors. We are trained uh, to, to, to breach into a, a building safely without injuring ourselves or anybody else. Um, but obviously, this uh, this shotgun that you can see now, um, great for obviously uh, gaining entry into buildings. Um, we are trained as SFOs to uh, obviously the, the best way, the most effective way uh, to aim this weapon at the uh, at the door in a way which will. Um, not just obviously blow the, um, the 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 main obviously pin that you see, which obviously closes the door, which locks it, but um, obviously the force of the weapon does does blow back and it will open the door as well. So obviously, as soon as that weapon's been deployed, the officers can go in and do their job uh, to the best of their ability. Um, obviously, that training for this weapon, uh, we we do obviously train a lot of our CPDs that we do. Uh, our training sessions uh, are re revolved around breaching and entering the building and sweeping the building and clearing it. Uh, so obviously this is a great way for officers to always keep on top of their tactics. It's a great opportunity for me, obviously, being an SFO, uh, to be constantly building on my skills. Beautiful. Um, so, there we go. That that, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I, another request, request, Inspector, if, if we can grab it from one of our vehicles, if we can see the big red key as, as one person's asked oh, personally i can talk a little bit more about the firearms training uh very quickly so a part of our training Just open the big for you if you want oh, no. uh, part of the training uh as a firearms officer so as an afo you would be trained in a range of entry tactics building clearances uh, how to stop and challenge suspects how to handle firearms correctly you'll also train how to deploy uh, firearms from your vehicle, so that's more common than the G36. So, our firearms officers are trained to deploy a G36 say, from the window of their vehicle uh, should there be a need to. Um, obviously, as well as the firearms shown by one of our firearms officers, uh, I mean, we might be able to get the baton round out if it's available. Yeah, uh, just getting that for you now, boss. Uh, uh, as our firearms officers, they also carry the MP5, which is a smaller, obviously, uh, lower impact weapon. Um, 
semi-automatic weapon, I believe. Um, and then, um, yeah, so this is the big red key. It's what not only firearms, but our traffic officers have access to and our, and our response officers who are method of entry trained. That's one of the many tools that we can use as a, as a, as a community, uh, as our officers are forced to make entry to a property. Uh, it's quite a heavy piece of equipment and it does it does a very good job. Um, we're going to have a look at the uh, the beam background as well. So There we go. So obviously, if you want to tell us what this is for. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so obviously uh, this weapon, it is uh, it does look de different to our other weapons. Obviously, it's got these two big green patches on it. Uh, that's obviously, it is uh, it's still classed as a firearm, uh, but obviously uh, this is more of a, a less... Um, it's still lethal, you know, if, if, this is, if you shoot someone in the wrong place with this, you can do a lot of damage, uh, just the same as any firearm. But uh, obviously, this is more, for instance, uh, for if we have someone on a more of a public order scale... For someone's um, obviously with knives, etc. You don't always want to challenge someone with, uh, for instance, a knife, or if they've got a machete or any kind of knife. Really, um, it's not always good to challenge that with a firearm. Uh, and if a taser, for instance, has been deployed and you're not, and you haven't got any more cartridges left, sometimes it's easier to pull this uh, to get this firearm out and deploy this instead of anything else. Uh, obviously, it can be lethal and it can be used as a lethal weapon if it's used in, in a particular manner. Uh, but this, obviously, th this weapon in, in particular is, um, it, it is it's great for, obviously, the public, more public order side of things. And uh, it's just another uh, tool, you could say, to add to our uh, weaponry, which we can use when we're deployable and out on uh, jobs. So another good a good exa a good example obviously operationally recently off our, our, our central firearms unit they attended a male who was inside a building and he doused himself in petrol uh, and he threatened to set himself alight with other people in the building. Uh, obviously they they deployed this as a, a really good example where they've obviously taser um, obviously being an electric can, can cause fire. Um, obviously so the beam background is an option there where you know. They can discharge and detain the male appropriately without using any lethal force. So it's a really good weapon. So I'll put, let you put that back. I just talk a little bit more about the training, and then we're going to go and have a look at the dog support team. So further talking about our specialist firearms officers. Once you're a substantive officer within firearms, uh, you will eventually be able to apply. So after about two to three months of being a substantive PC in firearms, uh, you'll normally get the opportunity. You leave that. You might even get it before then. You might be offered it. Um, you become trained as an SFO. SFOs, they, their training involves the safe use of specialist firearms. Uh, it, uh, they train um, further into the method of entry techniques um, to gain access to properties quickly. Uh, they do a little bit of training about abseiling and fast rope. So they have got, a, they do a small part of their training is about fast roping from helicopters onto platforms buildings etc um, they do a lot of scenario based training so that'll be that'd be common scenarios that they may face as an SFO uh, they use the use of stun grenades is a big part of the training um, they work closely um, they do train closely around obviously hostage rescue and handling techniques which is a big part of what they do uh, and the use of protective clothing in relation to a chemical biological radio or nuclear attack so that, that's all to do a part of their training as, as, as an SFO. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna move on now. We're gonna look at the last part of our fleet, which is our dog support fleet. Uh, it's a very impressive fleet here. I'm missing, I think, maybe two or three cars. I think it's two cars now. I'm missing the transporter. Yeah, I think we're missing the transporter and the and the 19 plate scud. Was that right, Inspector? Yeah, it's gonna be the uh, 19 plate superb. It's. Uh... Well, they're kind of uh, working on the light bar. They're having difficulties with mounting it at the moment. But so, uh, then we also have the T5 that's coming soon. If you want to take us through, uh, we'll go from old to new, I guess. So we'll go through the 15 plate. This is the oldest, this is the oldest, isn't it, that we have? Yeah, yeah. So this so, is the 15 plate, go on. Uh, this is the uh, 15 plate Skoda Octavia Combi. Um, it's one of the old vehicles. Um, We've got a lot of lighting on it, mirror lights, front lights, side lights, um, obviously the standard justice light bar on the top. Um, this vehicle is obviously air conditioned for animal welfare. 
So we have the nice, lovely air vent on top there. Um, inside the rear, we obviously have the cages for our dogs. Um, do you want me to switch the lights on? I can do, yeah. So each dog support vehicle uh, predominantly will carry two dogs, a general purpose and a recovery dog. So a recovery dog or a sniffer dog obviously can sniff out drugs, money, firearms, etc. Uh, and then a general purpose dog. Uh, which would be trained to work alongside our firearms officers um, in obviously bringing and subduing, subduing and detaining an armed suspect uh, um, and then we'd have obviously like I say our, our sniffer dogs who can go out to scenes and necessary buildings and vehicles and they can sniff out drugs, firearms, cash, et cash etc um, and they work very closely hand in hand with our firearms officers whether it be a static incident at a building they can send the dog in um, if needs be, uh, whether it be a moving job where they perform a hard stop, they can have the, the dog on standby ready to go. And, and these obviously these vehicles are very fast and they can match, you know, they can keep up to the back of, of a pursuit involving our firearms officers and they can deploy with our firearms officers and, and the, the dog handlers who are with them, they're suitably trained to, to work hand in hand with our firearms officers. So I'll, I'll let the inspector carry on talking about these vehicles and explain a little bit more, more about our dog support team. Uh, and then I think we'll let our firearms officers go. Alrighty. So, um, obviously, uh, we've got a wide selection of fire, uh, of obviously firearms vehicles, but we've also got the obviously wide selection of dog section vehicles. Now, um, the main vehicles that you'll see out on the uh, obviously patrols now will be the superbs mostly. So that's these three vehicles right here. But obviously, oldies are goldies. So. You've got to go with the uh, old Octavia sometimes. Um, but obviously, next we do have the uh, 17 uh, plate um, Skoda. Superb. Um, this obviously, if we walk around the vehicle, has the air vent on the top, uh, lighting all the way around the vehicle. Um, but obviously, we have the specialist uh, logos on the side saying this vehicle's air conditions, caution police dogs police dogs obviously um, we want to make sure that's visible so no person can say that we haven't identified ourselves as the police dogs as it's clearly visible on all of our vehicles plus on our uniforms it also says dogs um, should we switch the lights on, on this yeah, one can do. so on this these specific ones obviously our dog teams can deploy the dogs from the back window in, in, in the necessary need if they pull up the person running, i.e. if they're in a the field or whatever, they can deploy the dog straight out the window. The dogs are suitably trained to do so. They can deploy the dog straight out, um, obviously which helps catch the suspect. They're a very nice vehicle. Thank you, Inspector. Alright, so now moving on. Um, we have the 16 plates, unmarked, uh, superb. Now, this is uh, used in the same reason for unmarked firearms units, meaning that it can be used in covert situations, um, but obviously also marked situations due to lighting. Um, it's got sufficient lighting for uh, road users to know that this is a police vehicle when responding, um, with obviously the vehicle showing not really many signs that it is a police vehicle while driving normally down the road other than the air vent on the on the top um obviously the vehicle is a very nice vehicle and uh, is is greatly loved by our dog section colleagues but it's only the last mm -hmm. one now yeah so the last one here is um one of our 16 plate uh skoda superbs um this one has obviously different bumper style uh, to the 17 plate version over there um so obviously this vehicle is 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 literally the exact same as the 17 plates however there's uh, some livery adjustments um and obviously uh the setup remains the same um however we've got bumper dif uh, differences um so there's a little bit less yellow on the front bumper than on some of the other vehicles um, but other than that, this vehicle is the same, and uh, it provides a great, obviously, support for firearms as well as uh, response. Beautiful. Well, that's everything from.
from our central firearms unit. That's um, that is our central firearms unit fleet and and our well, ARV and dogs. Um, obviously, uh, there's a lot of a lot of information there for members of the public and for people who are inquiring about our firearms team. Just to quickly explain a little bit about our dog supports. The dog support is something that we're presently working on internally. Um, and we obviously when we do open our recruitment opens on Friday the do 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 get you the date Friday the fourth our recruitment reopens for members of the public after being closed for just under three weeks, um our recruitment will reopen to the public and there will be a direct entry path to join as a dog handler, um obviously there's there'll be a specialist specialised training which will get you trained qualified as a as an officer as a response officer. Uh, and then obviously you then further progress uh, into your dog handling training and handling of the dog uh, and how to drive the vehicle appropriately and obviously you get that training to work alongside our firearms colleagues our dog handlers they none of them carry firearms they are all uh, just they carry to the tailor trained officers and they do not carry any firearms but they support our firearm colleagues operationally not just firearms but they also heavily support response burglaries things like that uh, and they heavily support our traffic department um, so this is an all well good area so that keep an eye out for that on our website uh, but other than that I think that's everything thank you PC Pope Inspector Andrews for your time today it's appreciated uh, if you do have any questions from for, for myself or for the inspector or, the, or PC Pope you can obviously ask away in the comments below uh, and obviously I'll get that uh, over to them you can ask um, in our public discord or you can email us public relations at staffordshireallplay.co.uk uh, but apart from that thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon